Hello, everybody. Today, I want to talk to you about as the mind, so is the body. What is our body telling us when it comes to how we're living our lives and how we're treating it? And as the mind, so is the body was a, is a quote from Daniel D. Palmer, and um, he was the inventor, we could say, of chiropractic, uh, chiropractic. And um, so he was very much somebody who concerned himself with the body and how we were treating it. Now, I was hiking with a friend yesterday, and he was telling me how when he gets really, really stressed, he gets these incredible headaches and he gets really, really warm and really, really uncomfortable. So that reminded me of um, something that I've been noticing in myself, but definitely also in my clients. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about. My name is Gerrit Verwoerd and I'm a coach at Dare Greatly Coaching and um, I'm very glad you're here. So as I said, my friend um, told me that when um, he gets really, really stressed, his body is, will tell him to slow down when his head and his headaches start acting up. Now, when I look back over my life, my career, especially when I was still in corporate, there was a lot of stuff going on. My body was telling me a lot and I was not listening to it. Um, but let me backtrack a little bit. When I started working, I was on the verge of skinny. I, I'm very, I'm pretty tall. I never think of myself as very tall, but sometimes people point out to me that six foot one for a woman, um, 185 in, me, uh, in the metric system is quite tall. And I was weighing about 70 kilos, I think. And that is uh, not Miss Twiggy skinny for those of us who still remember her, but it is pretty skinny. And I was always very, very active. And when I started working, I came from a very active life and I settled into a desk job. I didn't change my eating habits and I very, very slowly started to gain weight just simply because I didn't move as much as I used to. So that was the start of what was perhaps not the most healthy lifestyle. I kept playing sports. I was very active in volleyball and I played tennis and that kind of thing. But, you know, a whole lot of physical activity had fallen away simply because I didn't have time for it anymore. I was in a nine to five job. And when I got home, there was simply no time to do a lot of things that I used to do. I used to cycle a lot because simply because that was my mode of transportation. And now I was sitting in a car. So that kind of thing happened. And as I said, I slowly gained weight. And because I'm so tall, I didn't really notice it. And it took a couple of years for me to realize two things, or one thing, really. I was not very happy in the job that I was doing. And I slowly started noticing that I had to buy clothes that were bigger than I had formerly uh, worn, you know, just a size bigger and it would take a couple of years and then I would need another size bigger. And so it went and then I would lose a little bit of weight, but slowly, but gradually I went up from 70 to 80 to 90 and at my highest weight and lowest point, perhaps I was over a hundred kilograms, which is comes to, uh, to 20 maybe in pounds. So that is overweight, definitely. I was still very lucky. It was nicely and evenly distributed over the whole of my body, but I wasn't feeling good about myself. And what I had noticed, what I'd come to realize was that I am an emotional eater. When I don't feel good about myself or good about whatever it is I'm doing, I, when I'm not careful, start eating and not the healthy stuff. I love my sweets when that happens. Um, so at some point I found myself, um, doing a couple of things, not cooking anymore because I was just too tired when I got home to do so. My dinner very often consisted out of a bag of chips. Um, I had, um, gotten into the habit of working very long hours which also contributed to not cooking. You know, pizza at the office was often that, uh, dinner in that case. 
Um, and I noticed some th some other things happening as well. I was always tired, even though I was quite certain I slept all night. I woke up, I was I would be so tired that I was actually feeling sick. And I would have to get some breakfast, a shower and some breakfast inside of me to feel a little bit better. But I, I never really re recovered during the day. And, you know, I'd go to bed at night again and hope for a better, a better morning. But those days where the mornings were good were fewer and fewer and further apart. So I went to the doctor because, you know, it's not healthy to wake up and be so tired that you actually feel like you have to go find a toilet. Excuse my, excuse, excuse my French. So I went, I was, I went into one of those, uh, I was put into one of those sleeping researches things. And, you know, I, I went to the hospital, got all kinds of things put on my head and looked like um, one of those alien figures going down the escalator and going home and going to bed. People thought I might have apnea and I didn't. Turned out I slept just fine. I was also having lots and lots of stomach problems. Um, so there were a couple of things that were happening. I was overweight quite, quite a bit. I didn't sleep well or I slept well, but I didn't wake up refreshed. Um, I also had stomach problems and I contributed that to an unhealthy diet. And finally, I had a recurring angina problem. Every uh, time, autumn, I think I would be um, losing my voice, not just a little bit, but I would be reduced to not even a whisper. I just couldn't speak and that would last for about a week. And that would happen every single year. Now that I think of it, usually not long after I returned from holiday. So when I had been gone, through, taken through the mill and, um, and nothing was found physically wrong with me, I, to the astonishment of my doctor, said, if there's nothing physically wrong with me, I want you to refer me to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, whatever it is that, uh, uh, that could help me. So I went and talked to some professionals and um, didn't, at that particular moment in time, didn't really work for me, but at least I got um, I did realize that if there was nothing physically wrong with me, then there must have been something mentally going on. I started doing work a little bit on that, but it took me um, until after a major burnout where uh, or into a major burnout before I could actually start changing habits that my body had been telling me that I really needed to change. When I, told, uh, when I finally broke down and had a burnout and had to go into the office or call into the office and say, I'm sorry, I'm not coming. I can't handle this anymore. I have to um, stop doing whatever it is that I'm doing because my body is telling me it's, it's simply shutting down. Because what I'm forgetting is one of the most important ones. I used to fall asleep behind the wheel and which, when driving, which is not uh, a very good place to be in a car and sleeping. So what happened when I finally pulled the plug and said, okay, this is it. I'm not doing this anymore. I have to take care of myself now. All my stomach problems that had been plaguing me for well over a year were gone by the end of the week. So I said, I, I told him at the office that I wouldn't be coming in uh, on Tuesday. By Friday, all my stomach problems had disappeared. It took me a bit longer to catch up on sleep. To because my body was so um, exhausted from having been abused for so long, for years really, at least seven, eight years of, of 80, 60 hour, 60 to 80 hour work weeks with a lot of stress and a lot of pressure that I put on it mainly, uh, not even so much uh, my, my, my boss or my colleagues, but usually it was me. Um, so that took a little bit longer, but it did happen. It did get better. I also started eating healthy again and slowly but gradually lost weight and got back to about 75 kilograms, which is about 150 pounds. So through that process, even though it wasn't a whole lot of fun having to go through it, I did learn some important lessons. 
And the most important lesson I think that I learned was this. I learned what my body is telling me when it is giving me certain signals. When I start gaining weight, and uh, not just a couple of kilos, because you know you fluctuate. I don't know about men, but women we fluctuate uh, easily. Thank you, Monica. Um, so um, when my body starts telling me that, or when I start seriously uh, gaining weight, that's a sign that I'm apparently stressing over something, and I have to start figuring out what it is. And sometimes that happens even though I'm eating very healthily, because these days my diet usually is very good. But still, when I start gaining weight, I have to start looking at what is it that I'm doing? What is it that I'm stressing about? Another one that's really helpful, I start falling asleep again at the most inconvenient moment, namely when I'm driving in a car and not as a passenger, but when I'm the driver. I've had it happen to me that I was perhaps 10 minutes away from, from home and I still had to you know, get off the highway, get up the road, find a place to park and sleep for 20 minutes. Because if I was to go on, to drive on and try to get home, I would either kill myself or even worse, I would kill somebody else. And I don't think I'd ever forgive myself if that happened. And especially not for that reason. So that happens. Um, if I lose my voice, that's another one. So that's also... Uh, a sure sign that I have to start looking at what it is that I'm doing. So, um, I think, in my opinion, it is really, really important to listen to what our bodies are te is telling us. Um, and not just listen to it, but also act upon it. It's easy to see uh, when we look around us how many people... Um, have perhaps physical problems, especially when when it comes to weight problems, that I am positive are uh, in part linked to not physical problems, but mental problems. And for anybody that, um, that looks at an overweight person and think, well, just eat less, is I've had people tell them, tell me that, just eat less, they, that, that almost certainly is a person that has never struggled with weight. Because if you overeat out of emotional uh, habits, if you overeat because there is some part of you that is unhappy or that is stressful, it can become addictive. And it's not like you can say, I won't drink alcohol because you can live without alcohol, but you can't live without food. So your temptation is put in front of you every single day. And even though I left, I've, lost 25 kilos a couple um, about 10 years ago i am still very much aware of the trap of eating too much and gaining weight through eating the, the the wrong things and like i said when i start doing that i have to watch i have to really go inside myself and find out what is it Gerdy, that you're doing what is it right now that doesn't make you feel good about yourself or about whatever it is that, you, that is happening in your life? So my question to you is, my, uh, it's almost weekend, so I'll send you into the weekend with that. What is your body telling you? So if you are experiencing some physical problems and those physical problems are not linked to something that's actually physical, what then is your body trying to tell you about the way that you are living your life? That's it for today. Um, I'd love to know if you're um, watching this after the broadcast has ended. Still go and um, comment on this. Perhaps um, others can learn from it. I'd love to hear from you. And for now, have a, a lovely Thursday evening or rest of your day, depending on where you're watching this. And Go there greatly. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.